My name is Joe Moego. I am the chair of the panel. I would like to thank the public for their interest in this meeting, but I would like to remind everyone that the purpose of the panel is broadly to provide critical design advice to mayor and council through the planning department on complex projects or projects in designated areas. As such, I would ask those who are not presenters to listen only. Any comments or questions can be directed to Greg Newman, the manager of planning. Alternatively, should this project or any proceed far enough in the process the public are free to speak at the relevant public hearings. <clears throat> I should also say that the proceedings of this meeting are being recorded so they can be posted online for wider availability. If you do not wish to participate in a publicly available broadcast, then you're free to review the meeting after it's posted. I would also, um, I would also ask all those in attendance, I think Greg's already done this, to please mute their microphones when not speaking. Um, the order of the meeting shall be as follows. So the planning department will give a brief overview of the project and introduce the project and proponents. The proponents will present their modified proposal. At this time, the panel will sequentially go through any questions for clarification. The proponent is free to address the questions as they come up. Once all questions have been asked and answered, we will move through the panel sequentially with comments. We'll move again through the panel sequentially with comments. In this case, uh, we will have all panelists comment for the proponent response generally. The order for both rounds will be, if they all arrive, are number one, Paul Rust, uh, retired architect and vice chair, Rushir Dahl, architect and landscape architect, Nicholas Waysworth, architect, Faye uh, Kubaki, and Phil Byer, and then Sharon Grayson from the BIA, and then lastly, myself, Joe Moigo, uh, architect and chairperson. After the round of comments and responses, a motion is made by a panelist on the project. The motion is typically seconded and then is up for discussion before a vote is called. Are there any questions um, from the panel or anyone? So we'll get started. So I'm going to pass over to, well, actually, we'll start with the agenda. <coughs> Excuse me. And, and just pulling up my agenda here. So, firstly, we need from the panel an adoption of the agenda. A motion to adopt the agenda as circulated. So, anyone on the panel? I can second that one. Okay. And then seconded by? By Nicholas, I think. Okay. And um, all in favor? Yeah, I'm in favor. Uh, I'm in Which favor. Okay. So, the the agenda is adopted as circulated. Moving on to the minutes that were pre-circulated by Greg. Um, has everyone had a chance to review them, hopefully? Um, so if we may add a motion to uh, receive those, uh, or sorry, a motion to um, to approve those minutes as, as circulated. Move. Uh, Panel might be muted, so it looks like Phil's in motion there. Um, and seconded by? Um, I'll second it, it's Faye. Oh, thank you, Faye. And then all in favor? And I'm course. in favor. I'm in favor, Richard. Okay. I'm in favor. And so that brings us to our first and only um, item on the agenda in terms of new business. So I'll pass over to Greg. Um, to reintroduce the project and the proponent, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, through you, just to confirm, everyone can see the screen there. Is that correct? Okay. So um, I'm going to keep the presentation fairly brief. This is the fourth time that the panel has uh, seen the application, so I do want to give the floor uh, to the applicant to be able to go through the changes that they've made in response to the, the feedback from the panel uh, in their last review. But that being said, I did want to take a, a very brief amount of time uh, to provide a bit of additional context uh, for the panel. And I've been corresponding with a number of members of the public, uh, many of which are in the room here today uh, on a number of issues. So I did want to offer uh, for their benefit and the benefit of the panel, a very brief overview of some of the issues that have come up um, these are issues that came up during the public information meeting that we held in late 2020. Uh, so that, they're not new issues, let's say, uh, to the project. They're recurring and um, continued 
issues, but I did offer to, as I say, a member of the community who is a representative of a coalition of uh, stakeholders um, that I would go through these. So I do want to make sure I do that. But as I say to the panel, I'll keep it uh, brief to be respectful of uh, the primary focus being on the on the overall quality of design. So some of the concerns that have been offered um, by the public and things that we've uh, on behalf of the municipality, we've been reviewing to make sure the technical merits of the project are sound. Um, but there were concerns with the alignment of the scale of this project with existing development on Vidal and in the area. Um, the ability of the road network to accommodate the, uh, the growth and additional traffic that would be generated by the project. I will say, and you can see there, LOS, which um, means level of service. So we have received a technical study um, from Binney and Associates, a traffic impact analysis that looks at can the road network um, accommodate the scale of development that's not only proposed in this project, but other nearby developments that are proposed, as well as a baseline assumption of growth uh, within the road network. And the conclusions of that work have been that the road network uh, today is sufficient to accommodate an acceptable level of service uh, based on industry standards. So we've looked at that. There has been considerable back and forth with the applicant on the design of, for example, the loading space to make sure that things like uh, vehicle traffic and circulation through Vidal and onto Thrift Avenue will function without uh, considerable conflict. So that's um, part of the technical analysis that staff are doing before a project gets to the panel. Uh, the capacity of the road network to support the functional elements. So part of the, the concern uh, concerns of the community, and we've received a submission from uh, a coalition of residents. Vidal is a tricky street because it has a pinch point immediately north of this site, and we have a number of um, apartment buildings that pull their garbage bins out onto the road to do um, the functional aspect of serving those developments, and that can be problematic. So in looking at this project, we've required that be a loading space with the ability to manage garbage collection off the street so on the private property so this has been uh, we don't want to repeat some of the challenges that we've experienced in the past and the applicant has um, has fulfilled our expectations as it relates to making sure the functional elements can be properly managed we'd also be looking and this came up at the public information meeting and i had mentioned this uh, during that meeting we'd be looking for a dedication of land along vidal street to allow for a widening of the street uh, which would allow us to provide things like on-street parking, additional space for sidewalk and boulevards, so street tree plantings and that sort of thing. Um, so we don't always have that opportunity with a review of a, de a development permit, but we do with a rezoning application. So in this case, uh, we've communicated to the applicant that we would be looking for a dedication of land, and they've designed their project to accommodate that dedication. So uh, the last couple items here, stormwater management and natural infiltration. So there is a below grade parquet that would uh, impede to an extent the natural infiltration of stormwater into the ground. There are a lot of planter boxes and a lot of opportunities for controls of stormwater before it enters the municipal system. Um, but there wouldn't natural, there wouldn't be natural infiltration into the ground um, if you were to compare this site with say a greenfield property or an undeveloped property. Um, but they have made accommodations to make sure that what enters the system is controlled. Uh, and lastly, respect for natural topography and tree retention. So th this has been a recurring topic of interest for the panel and certainly a topic of interest for the public at large is the ability to retain trees. This is uh, rec this area is recognized in the OCP as the Everall neighborhood and it's characterized by, by its very large mature uh, trees. So uh, the applicant has um, notched the parkade and we've discussed this in previous reviews. They've notched the parkade to accommodate the retention of uh, mature trees. Um, I mentioned at the last panel meeting, I think Mr. Byer brought it up, what accommodations are being made to make sure that the trees don't die through construction. So we would have protective barrier fencing put up, but in addition to that, uh, in consulting with the city's arboricultural technician, who's a certified arborist, we'd be looking at mitigative controls to make sure the cut face uh, of the parkade alongside or nearby trees does not result in things like root exposure and burning of the roots and that sort of thing. So there are mitigative controls that we would require with any sort of implementation of a work if the project were to proceed. So anyway, hopefully that offers the panel a bit of a sense of some of the due diligence and background work that the city staff have done uh, working with the applicant to make sure the project was presentable to the panel. Uh, and with that, Mr. Chair, I'll just very briefly. I'm just gonna close my window. 
uh, provide a bit of orientation because there has been some discussion about contextual factors and what's in the nearby area of development. So this is the subject property is on the right hand side of the screen. You can sort of see the, the edge of the curve here, perhaps, which is the, the start of Vidal Street. So this is Thrift Avenue looking west. This is the property developed south of Thrift. This is now looking up Vidal. You can see the Beverly building, which has been a point of discussion throughout the panel's review. Uh, the subject property here on the left hand side of the screen. So um, you can see the natural natural sloping down of uh, Vidal Street as it approaches Vidal or uh, as it uh, approaches Thrift. This is the property to the east of Vidal on the corner of Thrift and Vidal. You can see it's a two and a half, three story multifamily uh, building. Again, a little further up Vidal, you can see the development signage uh, illustrating the location of the subject property. The very large mature tree is immediately north of the subject property, so off site, uh, but to the north of the property. You can see there's a development sign on the east side of the east side of the road as well. There is a, an, an active application that we're managing on the uh, east side of the road that will eventually come uh, to the panel for review. But this gives you a sense of the composition. You can see a garbage truck uh, in the photo there that just sort of again highlights some of the concerns that the public has raised about uh, what I mentioned as a pinch point. So this is the pinch point here where the city did not take a dedication with the development of the Beverly. We would not be looking uh, to repeat that circumstance. We'd be looking at a dedication to allow for uh, the widening of the boulevard past this point. Again, just some illustration or just some photos of uh, development along Vidal Street, just giving the panel a sense of existing uh, development. We are looking for a design that is complementary to existing development as a key consideration of the panel. And again, I just wanted to put this information in front of you. Uh, this is the Beverly. This is sort of the interface of what would be the Beverly. There's a uh, a small park here south of the Beverly, so there's a bit of a, a split between the Beverly. Uh, property with the park out there, the retention of these mature trees, and then the, the subject property is just opposite these trees. This is a little further north on Vidal, so looking down Vidal. Again, looking down Vidal, you can see again the drop off in the street. So with that, by way of background, the application was and is for a zoning bylaw amendment and a major development permit, which we received in 2019. The original application was for 129 units in a six story building. So this was the former uh, design. Uh, the ADP provided comments uh, in between the initial application and this current application. Well, we did. Step a now. Baby step. Mm. We just mute. We have a new participant. Mute. I got to take a pee. Danny? Mm -hmm. Tim. Excuse me for a second, Mr. Chair. I'm just going to mute a couple of our. Um, so as I was saying, we, we did an official community plan review while this application was under review, the results of which was to reduce uh, the height and density contemplated in the plan that applies to this site. So now um, the height that's contemplated in this area is a four story building with the potential to go up to six, provided there's an affordable housing component as defined in the OCP. The applicant has since revised their proposal to drop the height to four stories so that there's not a necessity of including this affordable housing component um, and they've dropped the unit count to 82 units as well. Um, the parking stall supply would meet the requirements of the, the zoning bylaw and there's been some discussion about the inclusion of electric vehicle charging. So the applicant has proposed it would have 100% of the stalls being served, um, having a, a rough in for a charge and 12 of the of the 127 stalls provided a charge. The process uh, to date, there's a public information meeting, as I mentioned, at the end of last year or in August of last year. You can see that the panels reviewed this now. This will be the fourth time uh, with the project in front of the panel. Um, if the panel supports the project, we would uh, proceed to bring a bylaw to Council for consideration of first and second reading. There would then be uh, a statutory public hearing. So for those members of the public that are observing today's meeting, um, I've been messaging that the panel's mandate is largely to focus on the quality of design and the project's alignment with the applicable development permit area guidelines. And so things like concerns around traffic impacts, ability to accommodate garbage pickup and that sort of thing, those are concerns uh, that ought to be directed to council that staff can then respond uh, through that discourse at council. So 
um, that's where I would expect to see some of the more um, technical issues um, being available for further discussion. Uh, after public hearing, Council has the ability to consider a third reading of the bylaw, which typically comes with conditions like entering into a servicing agreement with the city's engineering department. And then once those pre-development requisites are addressed, you would look at final reading and then the applicant could proceed to building permit. So we're still fairly early stages in this project uh, to be able to get this in front of Council for consideration first and second reading and then a public hearing. So with that, um, thank you panel members for uh, allowing me that chance to give another overview and I will turn it over to the applicant. Uh, I have a question for Greg if I may. Can you hear me? Yeah, sorry Phil. Okay, thank you. Um, this is a time to, I think to ask a question for Greg. If I had, first of all, I want to comment. Thank you. Very excellent overview and I'm glad uh, that we're I've been informed about some of the more local uh, concerns, uh, which uh, many of which we've, we've addressed. My question is because of the change in the design compared with when you first did the, when you did the overview in, I guess last October, uh, it, with the larger design, that's when you gave us, uh, gave information about the, the requirements, I guess, OC, how it fit in with the OCP and zoning. So I'd like to get an update from you. I think you've covered it, but I want to be clear about this. It, it, there has been a change in the OCP. So am I correct that this now meets the OCP, and, but requires zoning bylaw because the current zoning is single family residence? Yes, through you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I had some backup slides here. Um, we didn't rehearse this, Phil, but um, yeah. So the the project does comply with the current recently amended policies of the OCP, so they do not require an official community plan amendment. The application is for a zoning bylaw amendment because the current zoning of the properties, which is an assembly of properties, uh, wouldn't allow for this project to proceed, so they need to amend the zoning to enable the project to proceed. And in addition to the, the zoning amendment, they need a major development permit because it's a multifamily uh, development within a development permit area. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sorry, back to you, Greg. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. So with that, I'll turn it over to the applicant. Um, I, I know we have uh, Lucas, and I think that might be Eric uh, in the room as well. So um, Lucas, I see, I believe Stephen's here potentially as well. So I'll turn it over to you, Lucas, if you wanted to share your screen. Could I um, perhaps, Greg, if you don't mind, Mr. Chair, it's Peter Fassbender. Just make a couple of opening comments to uh, the ADP panel. Um, first of all, I wanna thank you. We've gotten to know each other very well, the number of times that we've been in front of each other. And we've appreciated, uh, and Westone, as I said at the last meeting, is very much committed to uh, doing everything it can to accommodate all of the issues that have been raised that the panel has brought forward and including feedback from the coalition and so on. And I think the panel needs to know that uh, we did receive another written submission that Greg passed along from the coalition um, with some questions again, some of which he has summarized in his very concise uh, report. And I did want to say this, that uh, Weststone, as I've said before, is committed to being a part of White Rock now and into the future. Uh, there is another uh, development that will be coming forward at some point in the future. And all of the lessons that uh, Weststone has learned as a result of this process will be integrated into the thinking and any proposals that come forward. What we do think is important is that the number of changes that have been made from the initial submission that the panel looked at, uh, as you know, in 2019 and 2020, uh, reflect the comments and uh, Keystone, uh, Lucas and Eric will take you through point by point from the last meeting. So we wanna make sure that you realize we've looked at every issue that's been brought up and have a response. And that includes Stephen from the landscape architect as well to deal with issues like uh, the root protection and so on. 
for the mature trees. So at the end of their presentation and uh, after questions and so on, I might have a very brief uh, summary for you. But again, thank you. And uh, we'll turn it over to Lucas and Eric to start it off. Thanks, Peter. Gentlemen. Uh, you guys see the screen now? Yeah, sorry. Keystone, go ahead. Uh, you can you hear us? Can you guys uh, see? Sorry. Sorry. Can you guys see the screen? Yes. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Peter, for that. Um, like you said, I'm Lucas Wickbiss. I'm the project manager from Keystone Architecture, and I'm with Eric Poxleitner, who's the architect of record, working with me on this project. Uh, Greg had a good overview of, of the project there at the beginning. I just want to highlight that um, we're not we're prepared on the presentation to just focus on the ADP comments that we heard at the June meeting. So uh, holistically, the project hasn't changed uh, any of the, the larger design elements. We're still 82 units, four stories. The site planning is basically the same. The, the um, parkade entry point and parking numbers are all the same. So we're really focusing just on the ADP comments that we um, heard in June and how we address those comments. So we'll let uh, Eric jump in here just uh, to explain how we, we designed the building around some of the context of the neighborhood. Yeah, thanks, Lucas. So um, one of the comments on the last uh, ADP that we attended was uh, was how does this building and its design, mapping, materiality, scale fit into the local context neighborhood? Okay, next slide. There. We've done some imagery here that shows some of the adjacent buildings, such as the Beverly to the north. Um, and how, uh, you know, this building responds in terms of the mathing and sort of those box out build outs that you're seeing in the Beverly and the massing and how that brings the scale of the building down to, uh, to appear as a, as a much lower scale building. And then we've also, uh, you know, addressed the issue of, of the verticality of the entry. And, and you can see in the Beverly, it has this, this, this breaking point in the horizontal elements that uh, bring this, this strong verticality at the entry. Um, and then as you as you kind of go further down into the views here, uh, the stepping and the projecting balconies, uh, particularly in the corners, are picked up. So there's a flow of rhythm and scale as you go down the street. We looked at the adjacent building around the corner, the Royce, um, some of the materials, the, the kind of the wood finishes and the pop-ups and, and the, again, projecting balconies and the sort of the stepping. Uh, was picked up and, and shown here in our in our design, so that uh, so it, it fits in context and the flow of the neighborhood, uh, and really really taking into consideration the uh, the topography of Vidal Street as it goes down from the Beverly and down into uh, into the into the First Street there. Uh, we've uh, sort of revisited this image to sort of try to bring a bit more accuracy to the image of the building to the north, and and so you can see again. How it uh, how it fits in within in terms of scale and, and uh, sort of celebrates the Beverly a little bit more to the north. Great. So getting into the specific ADP comments, we set this up, but we're gonna we're gonna highlight a comment that we heard, and then we're gonna flip to how we address that comment. We're gonna kind of go through it point by point. So um, Eric, you're gonna speak to to this one here on the. Yeah, so sort of go to the next slide there. So, so this is again uh, sort of the material palette of the of the, of the project, and uh, the uh, the DPA guidelines speak specifically to what's considered the West Coast uh, uh, sort of style, but uh, but more emphasis on the use of natural materials. So as you can see here again, um, we've used uh, you know stone and and uh, wood members and the fascias and whatnot are all all wood uh, natural wood product. Um, with glass and stone, and and, uh, and then you got some sort of a there's a there's a, a work with uh, the vernacular, but more modern appeal with the metal panel around the box outs, with a, a finely detailed cornice, and uh, and some stucco elements and, and cementitious panel as well. Um, and then we also introduced uh, sort of wood slat elements into those those projecting elements to again warm up the building and bring that that sort of more West Coast ID idea in, into into the uh, into the design. Thank you. Okay, so there was at the last meeting there was a concern about the southwest corner of the site and the exposed parkade wall that was facing the neighboring development to the west. 
So we, we actually had around eight feet to work with between the property line and the parquet face. And we work with Manor Zem and Associates, our landscape consultant, to incorporate some tiered um, landscape walls there at varying heights uh, to and it really increase the planting uh, along that wall to help buffer the parquet, expose parquet wall from the neighboring development. We've also incorporated some, some more stone accents and some and played with some paint colors uh, on portions of the wall to, to really um, to emphasize and, and, and clean up that elevation facing the neighboring development. Uh, there's some questions about energy step code and, and energy performance of this building. Um, so the energy step code is, is an, it's an optional, every jurisdiction has the option of, of opting in for this to, 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 to use the step code to achieve energy uh, performance compliance. To date, White Rock hasn't opted in on the energy step code. So it's the BC building code that reg regulates the, the energy requirements. And, and that's what we'll be following to, to achieve our to, to achieve our uh, approval on energy. Um, that being said, the, the client is aware that, that energy efficiency is very important in the current market. And, and their intent is to achieve an, an equivalent to step two of the energy step code. Um, now, that being, again, being said that, that that won't be our compliance path to, to achieve approval on energy. It's, it's just a, the intent to achieve that same equivalency. Uh, the tree protection area, Greg, I mentioned this, and, and this, this is, keeps coming up over and over. So we want to clarify this one more time. So we created this slide here. Um, to highlight exactly what's happening. So the, the pink circles are obviously the existing trees that, that are being protected. And we've shown with that red dotted line, the, the protection zone that's been established by Vanders and Associates, who's our certified arborist on the project. So they went to site, they assessed the trees, the, the size and the, the species and, and told us where we can design to, to make sure those trees are protected. So the red line is the, the protection zone for those trees. And then we have, not, not sure parquet like Greg mentioned, but we've also managed to provide additional space on top of that protection zone. So along the north, we have about nine extra feet from that root protection zone to our parquet face. And along the west side, we, it ranges from two to four feet of additional space that we provided from our parquet face to that root protection zone. Uh, the next slide highlights two items that, that we heard, um, one of them being the, the privacy from the, the private outdoor amenity space for Unit 406 to the common outdoor amenity space, um, as well as the, 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 the fourth floor uh, connections of the units to their private outdoor spaces and, and what that design looked like. So well, this is a, a new rendering prepared for the, the private outdoor space. You can see the landscape planters and the landscaping that's going to be provided as well as a, a solid cedar wood six foot high fence that's going to run um, all the way from the building face to the out, outer edge of the rooftop um, for the, the 406 unit to help separate it from the, the, the public outdoor amenity space or common outdoor amenity space. And that same fence is going to be utilized on the separations between the private spaces. They're just not going to run all the way out. We're going to run them out about halfway and then deal with landscaping as a softer buffer for those spaces. I also want to highlight that we have uh, an extra width of, of landscape planter for the, the separation between the private unit 406 and the common outdoor amenity space, just to increase that sense of buffer between those two spaces. Uh, as far as the connection of the fourth floor units to the outdoor spaces, we've, we've kind of addressed that in, in three different ways. Uh, we've aligned the doors so that they're directly opposite each other um, across the corridor from each other, which, which really helps. Uh, connect them. Uh, we're we're going to change the flooring material and the ceiling, ceiling material at those locations as well to really highlight and, and signify that those are kind of one space and, and that they're, they're connected and also using uh, build out uh, frame build outs around the doors on both the unit door and the, the patio door uh, to enhance that connection. Uh, there was a comment about the, the long stretches of corridor in the building and if we were able to incorporate jobs to, to soften that somewhat. Um, I just want to highlight that we see a lot of these multifamily projects in the Fraser Valley, and, and we've looked we've looked through a lot of them. And, and this, the corridors on this this project are not longer than most. I would say they're average. They're they're not short by any means, but they're definitely not as long as what we see um, out there quite a bit. Um, now, that being said, there, there, there's lots of ways and treatments that we incorporate in the design to really soften the length and appearance of the corridors, and and it really comes down to interior design. Um, which gets involved more heavily when we get to that stage of design, but things like flooring material and, and changing up the ceiling materials, as you can see in these images, 
really helps to, to break up long stretches of the corridor, um, as well as frame out around doors, which I had mentioned, as well as lighting um, can all help to soften the length of a corridor, which we're, we're going to look to incorporate on this building. Uh, the privacy screens between unit balconies was was requested to be clarified, so we prepared a bit of a rendering as well as a detail. So basically, these these privacy this shows a bit dark in this rendering, but this would be the privacy screen here, which is basically an aluminum frame about seven foot high, and then we use an opaque or a frosted glazing uh, as insets in the panel to to act as the screening between the patios. Uh, just clarification really on the fascia and cornice details. We let Eric jump in on, on this here. Yeah, there was some comment on, uh, on, on the cornice detail and design, and uh, we responded to that by just refining that the, sort of the cornice on the top of those projections, particularly with a, with a small regulate and a, and a pre finished metal sort of flashing cap that, that gives a more of a clean, modern look to those, those box coats. There was a conversation about one of the unit layouts, which had some challenges because it had a walk in closet along the exterior uh, and the bedroom was inset and didn't have natural light coming into it. So we, we've come up with a, a unique solution to that. Um, we're proposing, as the, the picture shows here, kind of a custom built in closet solution, which wraps around the headboard of, of, the, of the bed along the main wall here. Uh, utilizing that, it allowed us to remove the conventional closet configuration and delete the door in the wall that was once separating this, which was formerly the walk-in closet from the bedroom. So now we've turned that space into a bit of a study area or a tech nook, um, and it, which has access to the, to the window, obviously to the exterior. So now without the door and window, we have natural light flooding through that space into the bedroom, which we found was a, was a good solution. Uh, and there was questions about rooftop mechanical units and amenity space for the, the common outdoor amenity space. Uh, I don't think we had mechanical units shown on, on our previous drawing. So we've been working with a mechanical consultant to try to nail down these locations. And we've come up with the three locations that are shown here, one at the north end of the building here, uh, one near the elevator core in the middle of the building here, and then one just a little bit further to the south here. Uh, this rendering down in the bottom right corner kind of shows our proposed screening, which is it's, it's very similar to the screening that we're proposing for the, the private balconies and the common balconies, which is the, that six foot high wood cedar fence. And um, we've tied it into to next to the building uh, here so that it's fully screened from street view as well as um, from the common outdoor amenity space. And then to do with the outdoor amenity space storage, we've added two storage rooms, one in this location here and one in this location here. Again, this rendering here kind of shows what that would look like. We've, we've taken those storage rooms and kind of built them into the structure of the building so that they don't look like an afterthought or an add-on. We found that that was a good solution. So getting into some of the landscape comments, Stephen, you can jump in here. Sure, yeah, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'll, I'll review the landscape changes and address that address the previous comments from, from the panel as well. Um, so the item that shows there on the screen, two new trees located at the northwest corner, there was a concern on the lower level. Um, there was quite a shaded area on that northwest corner. So in the, in the image here that Lucas is pointing to, the two pink trees are now spaced out. There used to be trees between those that we've taken out that, to allow more, more sunlight to access that, that um, bottom patio. So we have adjusted the, the tree plan in that in that location. Um, Lucas also referred to the upper. Uh, I guess I'll follow uh, the comments here. So yeah, more more plant variety was um, was re requested. So mainly on our on our lower level, the main floor plan, we we've added um, three additional shrubs. Um, there's more service berries, salal and uh, smooth sumac that were added on if you go one one down, Lucas, it'll show this. Yeah, this plant here, the main floor. You can see the the plant schedule there in the, the left side of the page. The the ones that are highlighted in red is what have been added. So there was 12 varieties of shrubs, and now we have 15, as well as two additional um, species of ground cover were added. Um, British Columbia wild ginger and gold dew were added just to uh, increase the variety and add a little more um diversity to the the planting on the main floor um then the hose bibs and the gas services have also been coordinated on our on our plans and we've located them um 
where it makes the most sense. But each of those upper units has access to a, a hose bib on their patio for for watering and and use. And then um, the the gas service locations for for the barbecue. So there's I believe three different barbecue locations: two on private patio, and then one in the in the common amenity space that would be provided with a stub out for gas service. Um, as far as additional changes, uh, really on that patio level was was just responding to the the location of the additional mechanical rooms and the storage rooms that were added. So there was some some shuffling of the site furnishings just to make sure that there was circulation space and um, um, proper spacing around where those new storages were added. The the biggest area being on the, the south side because of that large mechanical room there. So we actually changed the perimeter pathway a bit and it's kind of it kind of provides a separate more private um, seating area. Now it is tucked around the corner, but we've addition, we provided lighting um, plus a, a tree there, so that can be kind of its own little social space off on the corner. Um, but then the perimeter path still connects around um, for for maintenance to the the playground area. Um, that I believe covers off all of the the changes that were made on the on the landscape plans. Thank you, Stephen. So yeah, that's the presentation. So we're looking forward to your comments and questions. Okay. OK, thanks, gentlemen. So I'm going to um, step through in the order. So Paul has not arrived. So we'll start with questions from the panel um, to the proponents. So starting with Rushir, do you have any um, particular questions with respect to the presentation? Sure. Can I uh, can I see uh, the site plan, please? The landscape site plan with planting would be great. Yeah, it actually, mine is not part of this presentation, so we'd have to pull it up from a different no, source. No, take your time. I can br I can bring it up, Lucas. Okay, thank you. So you'd like you'd like to see the full shrub plan this year? Yeah. Or, yeah, that'll or be this? Great. yeah, that'll be great. This is yeah. Yes. Share. So this is our that's level four um, and planting plan is down down here. So this is our upper level planting. And this is our main floor planting in the full okay. screen. Okay. okay, okay. I think we can make do with this. First of all, I welcome the changes you've done. Uh, the northwest corner was rather dark. You've made some moves to kind of make it more uh, open, bright, more absorptive of sunshine and kind of good changes is also the changes of adding the the storage rooms upstairs uh so quite a lot of changes in you know towards uh, a positive side on the landscape i still would recommend adding i there are about i think uh six or seven trees that are being retained towards the west side on which um i guess uh you spoke eloquently about but uh, I just see if you if you see out here the second uh, plan, which is towards the south side, I see one layer of planting out here uh, next to the building. It's a rather tall building, and then we have an adjacent property. So I would recommend adding a little more planting on this side, and uh, maybe adding some smaller trees etc just to create a little more separation because it's a linear and a thin site and adjacent to other residential properties to the west so a better separation would be recommended but yeah i guess by and large you've kind of done well to address most of the concerns i tried my best i couldn't see Gotheria Salal anywhere I couldn't locate it on my plan, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, you added a little more uh, 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 variety and uh, diversity, so that's good as well. Now, can we go to the top level? I will I will talk about the landscape first, and I have a few things about architecture which I'll go later. Okay. Yeah, thank you. No, yeah. Uh, planting. So, so Rishir, we're still with questions, right? Yes. 
Okay. Yes, the top level. Yeah, thank you. So I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve trees on this terrace. So have twelve trees would typically require about hundred and twenty. Uh, cubic meters of soil. Even if you have slightly less, it will be still quite a large amount of soil. So have you considered the structural uh, situation of how you are going to be dealing with so much of soil volume on a built up uh, wood frame structure? That is something that we, we need to um, look at closely. Um, it has been considered with the species of the of the trees, we've we've selected relatively small um, trees, and we've tried to increase the the planter volume as as much as possible. But um, certainly, there's more discussion that needs to take place with structural. Yeah, for sure. This comment, I think this has come up at previous meetings as well, and, and we did have conversations with the structural engineer, and, and they're comfortable that we can make the structure work with a wood frame to to carry that load. Like like, uh, have you considered the uh, a dead load of uh, 120 cubic meters or uh, some reduced volume or whatever, because it doesn't seem like it's going to be taking that kind of soil volume out here firstly. And structurally fine, I'll take your word that structural engineer has kind of uh, agreed to supporting that kind of load. But yeah, it seems rather large. I don't think so many trees can fit in there unless uh, you know, if it were a concrete building, it would have been easy to understand. But on a wood frame building with that kind of volume seems rather unlikely. So I'd like you to get into detail. So that was one question. Uh, any can you show me that slide that has uh, stepped planters on the west side? This is the grading plan here. Yes, yes, thank you. So what is the uh, what is the setback out here from the building to the property line out here uh, to the west side uh, where where the minimum condition uh, minimum setback is visible towards the right side of the screen towards the south side of the development? Yes, out here. What's the what's the setback here? from to our retaining walls. That's right. This would be about two meters. Yeah, I think we I mentioned in the presentation was about eight feet from the property line to the parquet wall. And obviously the tiered planter walls are, are within that. So how is my question is how is that space? I just want to get a character of that space. How is that space being used? Yeah, it's a it's a challenging space. Um, let me just look what we've got here for 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 planting. So we've we've proposed is that the right? Yeah, this is the yeah. Right. But you have you have one line of skinia japonica, but yeah. what else is happening there? Um, I don't see anything else. Uh, is it hardscape? And then there is just one layer of skinia japonica. What if you can just explain uh, that little space to me? Yeah, at the at the edge of the property, it is very, very difficult there. So we've tried to provide the, the planting just to screen that parquet wall as much as possible. Um, but more than that, there is no there's no hardscape there. It's it's just the planting bed against the, the property line. Yeah, I see. I see a door coming out there. So that door. Uh, that's on the yes. upper. That's on the that's upper on. level, correct, Lucas? Yes, that's right. That's at the upper level. OK, OK. So so I still am at a loss of what the the section. Do you have a section through there or anything else that you can show me what's happening um, there? Not on Where the landscape it? plans, Lucas. Do you have sections of this? No, we didn't prepare a detailed section through there. OK, OK. Um, and one last thing, can you show me the architectural uh, plan of uh, uh, the unit plans that you talked about increasing the light uh, condition in the smaller units.
Yes, thank you. So you said that, yeah, you kind of moved the closet from here, added a little bit of a study area and uh, accommodated your uh, um, closet requirements to the back, back of the bed, just like shown in the picture. What is the what is the length of this little space that uh, the study space that you call and what is the length of the shaded balcony outside? Sorry, bear with me for a moment. So the length of the that space, I'm not sure yes. if it's my cursor, this, this length yes. here, that's yes. roughly yes. seven feet. Seven feet? Yeah. Okay, and what's the shaded balcony outside? So this space yes. here? Okay, yes. that is five feet. So we have about... 12 feet of uh, rather shaded before uh, this bed area can be accessible and do you and what's the width of the window there? Uh, it's likely a three foot window. Three foot window. Do you think that will be sufficient to light this bedroom? Yeah, I, I see your point. It is a bit of shaded space, but it, it's definitely an improvement on where it was with, with some light getting in, into that bed. We're, we're comfortable with it. OK, those were my questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rishir. Um, moving down the list here, questions from Nicholas, please. Thank Nicholas, you, you have Chair. any questions? Yeah, yeah so I have a couple, couple of quick questions here. So I just had a couple of questions, actually, um, in extension to what Rashir was talking about. So I was looking at the the PDFs just very quickly, and I noticed that actually some units still have the closet. On. So I just wanted clarification whether all units are getting getting the closet out because I I don't know if your unit sixty and D two still at least the ones that people looked at still have the closet. Yeah, that's we likely didn't have time to, to make all the changes to every unit before we resubmit it. So the intent is any any unit that has a similar layout will change to this this new configuration. Okay. I, I figured that I just was wanted to just to triple check on that. Um, the other thing is, I guess maybe it's not so much a question, maybe it's a highlight question. I was trying to go through the plans and your elevation to find out which window actually that is in your exterior elevation. All these little, uh, all these little closets, closet, whatever you want to call it now, your study. To see whether actually that would actually have an effect done in the long run. Um, where those windows are placed at all. Yeah, I don't have an elevation in the presentation. Uh, just bear with me for a second. I'll try to open up uh, something that might show that. I think we can see them on ST401. Yeah, open up a different set of mail. Just a little bit. Okay. Yeah. SD 401, you mentioned? That's where I saw them. Um, I've got the presentation. It's not a very big, like, you know, so, so yeah. serious question. It's more that, you know, I guess it's a high level question here. Will that depth of that little nook that, like Rishi was talking about, you know, it's like eight feet long, will that have a different, would that, in the end, would that have a change in the appearance of the building um, during the daytime or nighttime due to that sort of tunnel space um, on the elevation? You, will it have a domino effect on the outside elevation of your life? Yeah, it should, well, just from a, strictly from a building standpoint, it shouldn't have any, any change to the exterior elevation at all. Um, it's a different space. It's a different. It's not. It's no longer a walk-in closet. So it'll, more light will come out of that window, obviously, um, with it being connected to the bedroom and that kind of thing. But architecturally, from the outside, it, there's no change to the to the exterior. Um, those are my only question. The rest I have is just for comments. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Nicholas. So moving on to Faye, do you have any questions specific? Um, Joe, is it my turn or is it Paul's turn? He's he's joined us. Oh, Paul's here. 
Oh, yes. yeah, sure. Um, no, I just, because I know you were doing all the... Or yeah, I was going okay. in order. So I'll, 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 I'll circle back. I'll mute. I'll, I'll circle back to Paul Faye. Why don't you go ahead and then um, we'll, we'll end with Paul and myself. Okay. Um, just a couple of comments. The um, Just so I have a clear understanding. The playground area, the designated playground area, is that on the top level? That's on the rooftop, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Um, and the there's an eight foot tiered wall on the west side of the building. Yes. Okay. Um, I do like the enhancements to privacy, which are on the decks and uh, what you've done on the top floor. I think that's uh, definitely a, uh, quite an improvement. Um, the other thing that uh, Rashir had made a comment about the rooftop trees, the number of rooftop trees, uh, I have the same concern. It, is it, you know, is that, is that, are there too many rooftop trees being proposed? That's, uh, that's all my comments. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, so additional questions. Um, next is Phil. Phil, do you, have, you might be on mute. Phil, do you have any questions? Yeah, and, and um, not being an architect, I tend not to focus on the interior design, uh, designs. Uh, with, but I, I want to start with that, and then I'll get to some more general uh, questions. And I'll, this is questions, not concerns. Just for clarity, <clears throat> on the fourth floor, can you show us the design of the fourth floor? Because I don't think that you responded to the issues that were actually raised. It may be a misunderstanding. So could you go to the fourth floor? I don't know what page on your, on your, uh, uh, so there were two issues, one unit 406 privacy and fourth floor, fourth level unit connections. So yeah, so the amenity space on that is, there, I, I looked at the architectural design. So the amenity space is across from, Four oh. Let me get to my own figure. My own. Just um, am I? So could you clarify? You've you've responded. My interpretation is you've responded to that issue through. I'm looking at it. My own detailed through this the cedar fencing and trees between the amenity space that you have there, that's with the red uh, on the writing, and the unit roof deck of 406. The re issue that I raised, or I, maybe others, I don't know, is it's, it's about the sound and activity from the outdoor amenity space there that you show in the right hand, the bottom right corner, and the amenity space around that's not shown here, and units 407, 408, and 409. And that's that was the issue that was raised about the, in the units, not, although I agree with you, there's an issue about the outdoor amenity and the roof deck for 406. But there's also, so my question is, what is it about the design? You may need to go to a different, perhaps the architectural plan for the fourth floor. How? is the outdoor, the, the activity on the outdoor amenity on the fourth floor, protect the people in 407, inside their units, 407, 408, and I think 409, if those still even exist uh, now with the change in design. Um, that's what I wanted, that was the issue that was raised, that I raised. Yeah, that's it. So if you could zoom in on that, on the right side, for the right side of that, Yeah, that's it. That's yeah, so we, we, there, there are no windows in, in this wall here. 
obviously. So all the, the patio we pulled as far away from the, the public amenity space as possible for that unit. There's a couple small bedroom windows here that, that are relatively close, but there, there is substantial treeing and buffering along that portion as well. And there are no windows in this wall. And this, this wall will likely be treated with some additional acoustic uh, solutions there to, to, to prohibit Thank noise transfer through there. Okay, thank you. So, so that's addressed, and the one on the effect. So now, the other thing that that Joe maybe he wants to follow up, and I I will. The question is, what was the response to the comment about having the corridor? They, I don't see a change. The comment that he made, and, and and I'll just pick up on that, is about the private roof patios not being linked to the units themselves. It was an issue for me too. And how that relates to to security for those for the units and the and the private I basically it's the privacy of the units because you've got a corridor right through there on the fourth floor. Was there any consideration given? Because that was what the comment and it may not be an easy thing to address, but I'm just wondering what the response is. I, I think at one of the previous meetings there was a, a, a potential solution was suggested of flipping the corridor on this floor to the opposite side so that the units and patios were directly side by side. But there, there are structural implications of that that wouldn't allow us to do that as well as exiting, getting to the exit stairs. It really complicated things. So, so that wasn't a viable solution for us. Um, so the, 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 the features that I mentioned in the presentation, the three elements that we incorporated were our proposed solution to improve the, the situation of the, the interface between the unit and the private, private outdoor space. Anyway, I'll just raise the question of security. It's a detail about the security of locking and of access and so on. I'll just leave that um, as, as a, an issue um, because I, basically there's been no change. It's still an issue. Um, tree, uh, I want to go now to the stormwater detention. There was a comment made by Greg uh, early on. I think it's in the basement by P3. So I'd like some clarity on that. If what what uh, in P3, because it's been pulled back, is there an increased size of a detention facility? Sorry, P3 has been pulled back. Yeah, it pulled, pulled further out of the ground because we, we we reduced the parking for the reduction in the unit count. I, I, have, I do not understand your question about the stormwater detention. So has it increased the, is the plan for an increased size of an actual detention tank or, 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 or well, basically facility? Is that what the, and and has that been? And I would I guess this is really technical detail for the city and the city engineers is how that compares with the runoff, uh, the stormwater uh, from that. In order to, I mean, it doesn't change the amount that's going to go into the sewer system, but it does certainly change uh, can improve the um, the the capacity, improve the ability of the sewer system to handle uh, increased storms. So that's basically. So yeah. is that, has that been sized or have you worked with the city or has that come later? Well, we have, we have a civil consultant on board that, that's designing that um, in collaboration with the city, obviously to their requirements. Uh, I don't know the details of it, but I will say that the reduction of the footprint of the P3 level wouldn't impact the size of the stormwater management controls that we have to incorporate. The overall footprint of the building on the site is still the same, and then the, the parquet levels above P3 are, are the same size still. So um, it might give us the opportunity to utilize some of that space to actually do some of that in infiltration that Greg was talking about, but I don't know the details of that. No, that's fine. I mean, Mike, I guess let, let me get to the chase. Is there a specific detention tank or facility built into the plan for the ground at the P3 level or below the P3 level? No, not currently. So it's really a question for Greg. Is that something that might be required by the city? I mean, you made the comment, so I thought. Yeah, no, it's a fair comment, Phil. Thank you. Um, three, Mr. Chair, the, uh, <clears throat> the detailed civil design typically follows the receipt of first and second reading of rezoning. So we'll we'll be looking at sort of preliminary civil design to make sure that um, the site itself can accommodate the intensity of the use, but when we get uh, past uh, first and second reading, that's sort of when there's um, a general principle of development established, and in fact, more so after third reading, 
So if council were to grant third reading, one of the pre-development requisites would be execution of a works and servicing agreement. And so at that point, we're working with the applicant on the detailed civil design. We'd want to uh, make sure that post development stormwater flows match pre development flows. So it may be that there's the use of a detention tank like you're like you're sort of alluding to. Could be rooftop storage as well um, that allows for a gradual infiltration of the water into the system so that it's not a, a sort of a big dump of, of water into the system with all the additional hardened surfaces. So. I'm not a civil engineer, but that's sort of how we would address that. Is that a later stage in in the, okay. uh, the detailed design? Yeah, I don't consider that to be a particular ADP, except it is a, because except to the extent that they there isn't as much green space here for infiltration. Um, let me go to the uh, question of trees, which I continue to to raise, and this is again questions. Um, so correct me if you can go to P1 and P2 and P3. Those are three pages, I guess, in the architectural drawing. It's very it's impossible for me. I shouldn't say impossible. <laughs> it was difficult uh, for me to clear to be get clarity on. Yeah, could you zoom in on the left side there? Is this P2? This is P2 or one? This is P2. That's all that's fine. So I'm going to assume, or you correct me, is P1 and P2 the footprints the same? Yes. Okay, so if I look at P1 or P2 there, compared with the initial design, I, I asked a question at the last meeting, or I mean, one of the, la the last two meetings. Um, I guess it was the last one where, you, where there was a statement that, that the wall, I'm talking now about the exterior foundation for at the for P1 and P2 because there was a statement about that the left side had been pulled the, the north side wall had been pulled back but it wasn't cl clear to me whether that was all three levels uh, and there was a statement made that we weren't sure but we think that they're all this is my interpretation that we're not sure uh, didn't have the details about whether or not all three were the same, P1, P2, and P3, the wall on the left. The exterior foundation wall was at the same location for P1, P2, and P3. Do you now have a, know whether or not that's the same, or is P3 pulled back and P1 and P2 were not? Yeah, so I, I recall that question. I, I thought we had to resolved it at the last meeting as well. So P3, and there was some, some confusion. So P3 was pulled back very substantially because of the reduced parking. What we were able to do at the same time with the redesign was adjust P2 and P1, the exterior walls in this location and a little bit of the walls in this location to pull the parkade walls further back from the root protection zone than they were with the previous design. So P3 is, is different than, than P2 and P1. P1 and P2, we were able to adjust the walls and, and pull them further away from the root protection zone than they were with the higher density design. Okay. And do you know roughly how much that was pulled back? Was it, it was it was by it was pretty much by that, that couple of feet that I mentioned. I think originally the wall here on the west side was on the root protection line or, or, or just beside it. Now we've pulled it back that two feet. So there's just a little bit of extra buffer space there. Okay. Well, it's it's better than nothing, that's for sure. Thank you. Now, the, the next, well, I think this is my last question. There was a, let me just make sure I don't, I don't want to have to come back and say I forgot something. Um, well, uh, uh, yeah, two questions. One very simple one. Energy step, you're at step two. Am I correct, and any of the architects here should be, I hope can answer it, is that that's going to be a requirement by 2022 or 2023 in the, in the building code? But there's a desire for step three. Now, I'm not, not pushing you yet. At least I think you have a, a clear answer that it's step two. And is that a requirement for 2022 2023? Do you know when it's been adopted? Building code? Right. The step code. It's all updated. Yeah, this ballot. It's in the building code, but all the uh, municipalities get to choose. Right. Oh. I couldn't understand the, the answer. It was very much. Yeah, so currently in the, the, the municipalities still get to to choose into being a part of the step code, which White Rock has not. 
No, I understand about White Rock. I'm asking about the, the building code. Is this that we can be part of the building? It's, I, don't that, that I don't think that date's been confirmed. Well, well, yeah, if, you're, if, if you're asking if the, the specific date that the building code is going to adopt the step code, I don't think that's been fully established yet. Okay, I was reading something that it maybe it was. Yeah. It doesn't really relate here. Okay. Any, so any, other, questions? any other questions, Bill, on the, on the project? Yeah, my the Benson question is whether or not the, this is being designed, but by the time this would be built, Will be a building code that may be amended. I'm just wondering whether that's going to be step two or step three. Uh, if they if they apply after the adoption of another building code, then that building code would apply. So it's I don't know if that's material here. Okay, that's correct. Yeah. Okay, so my last question is uh, trees. Uh, back to trees. There was a statement made, and it's in the minutes that says the they've you've kept the trees, you've kept the trees. And I and I got a copy because we haven't focused much on that and, and maybe we, we won't or don't need to, but we've never raised the question of what trees are being removed. And it was very difficult from the information we had, but I've now looked at the, ar at the, at the um, Arbor's report. So complete, this is the question, correct me if I'm wrong. All 12 on-site trees are being removed. That's a statement that I think is correct. Am I right or wrong? That's correct, Phil. Yeah, I can share in our landscape plans that we have the full tree protection and removal plan, which shows the, the trees that are being removed. But yeah, there aren't any on-site trees that we're able to retain with the parkade. Which is sort of makes sense because of the, the way the design, but I just did, there was a statement that you've kept the trees, but the trees that are being kept are the ones that are off, correct me if I'm wrong, are only the off-site ones that ha that are owned by other people. That is correct, yeah, which, okay. and those are the most significant trees in this neighborhood too, so we yep. made a lot of effort to, to retain those. And is there, would there be, then the question is, would there be, as part of the city prop, process a way of indemnity or not indemnity what's the word liability to is as part of an approval process to guarantee or the viability of those trees i know what you've done and i appreciate that but if something happens to those trees on the north and the west side is there something that would be built as part of the agreement city agreement or whatever to uh if those trees if something happens to those trees because of this development that's really what my question is yeah yes absolutely it's in it's in the bylaws for for um the effort that goes into retaining those trees so there's ongoing monitoring that happens through construction and our arborist team will be heavily involved in in that monitoring as well right from when the the tree protection goes up before any any excavation or site clearing I happens i'm thinking about five yeah. years from now the five right. years built and there's been some root anyway i guess yeah. that mr know. chair i can i can speak to that um yeah. very briefly um so what would happen, Phil? So with the issuance of a tree management permit, as Stephen mentioned, um, there would be requirements for on-site inspections and monitoring by the project arborist, so the applicant's arborist, throughout excavation and construction, even before that starts. But even before we get there, before we issue the permit, the applicant would post, have to post securities for the retention of any, any tree. So in the illustration that you see there, we'd be taking um, we'd be taking securities to hold against trees to be retained, and we would be taking cash in lieu potentially of uh, the trees to be removed. There would be an offsetting impact with the proposed trees uh, to be planted through the through the installation of the uh, the landscaping works. So there'd be an offsetting sort of calculation to be done there. But the securities are held for a period of one year following completion of the work. So. Uh, once the the works are complete, we've issued occupancy on the building. Uh, the kind of the clock starts ticking. Uh, we then wait a year, and if the trees are still in good health, uh, we would release the securities that are being held for the retention. It is really important that the project arborist is on site throughout construction because if they're not able to sign off 
uh, to say that they were there to monitor the works as they were unfolding, then that can result in a forfeiture of the securities because we, we may not know that a very large route, say, was encountered during excavation and the project harvest was there to monitor and make sure that it wasn't, say, cut in a way that would um, result in the potential loss of the tree, say, three or four years down the road. Um, okay. Yeah. Good. Thank you very much. Those that's those are my questions. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Greg. Thank you, Greg. Thank you, Phil. So moving on to Sharon, do you have any particular questions to the applicants? Sharon, Hi. Thanks. Hi. Um, I don't per se have any questions. Um, just wanted to make a few comments, and I appreciate all of the work that's gone into addressing easily the the questions since we're you know narrowing in on this. Um, I did have a comment about uh, Phil looking for the the worry about the corridor where the privacy is, the privacy for the private decks, and just wondering if at that point uh, just a gate could be put up for the corridor just to only be accessed instead of being open because the way it looks on the plan is there's an opening um, next to the amenities. If it, there, there's a locking gate that would only be ac accessible by those who could go to their private so that people that generally who are on the amenities couldn't go down there. That's just a comment. Um, and the energy step code, I, you know, I'm a well aware about the energy energy code and trying to stay with it um, and being at a, at a, a level of it. Um, just to remind everyone, the higher the energy code is, the more expensive. And this, we have to think of the consumers. I know that there is levels of it. But it is, you know, being prudent in you doing it as best we can and remembering that these are supposed to be a somewhat affordable for people to buy. Um, and my other comment, um, I like the examples of what you've done. I've been in some really creepy quarters that go on forever and ever. And adding interest in the quarter makes a huge difference. And the examples you gave were very good. And I appreciate that as well. And that's. And thank you for making the changes that you have and being and trying to come to a really amicable conclusion with all of this. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. Um, Paul, welcome. And um, do you have any questions? I apologize for being late, first of all. And uh, right. it's nice being at the end of the line because all the questions that I was going to ask pretty well have already been asked. But one question I have is the quantity and quality of storage for the units. Uh, I don't know whether we addressed that before or not, but could we kind of review that? I know there's bike storage, a gross amount of bike storage, which is interesting. And I'm wondering, I'm concerned that the, the storage will end up going out on these balconies. So <clears throat> I wonder if we could look at the basement plan where the storage is. One. Possible? Yeah. Yeah, just uh, one second, just finding the drawing here. Yeah, this I think this question has come up before and we sorry, we're trying to work this old mouse. Uh, we pointed out the, the storage spaces that we have at the parkade levels. Um, throughout different levels, bike parking, as well as unit storage, um, in various storage rooms. And that's been changed slightly since our, since our redesign of the parkade. And I think we actually might have lost some of that storage space uh, due to the re reduction of the parkade area. Um, so what we, we could look at, at, at potentially adding some storage space on P3 uh, level and running, thing, running the parkade down a little bit further um, into the ground where we had those stalls provided previously. Did you blow up the storage area, the bike storage area? Enlarge it? Yeah, I'm working on it. Just uh... So that's the bike storage area. But like I said, we, we did <laughs> some of the storage space in the parquet levels when we redesigned the parquet. So a solution okay, to that this... might be to, to run the parquet down a bit deeper. The, the type of bike storage, are we looking at chain link fence or what does the storage compartment look like? What, what is it made of? 
that hasn't been fully vetted or, or or designed at this stage yet. Okay, what what I'm about to suggest is I, I live very close to White Rock. Very seldom do I see a lot of bicycles in the city ever. And uh, it's very hilly, of course, but I, I'm hoping that this bike storage could be converted to storage for general items as well, and that that it wouldn't be of the chain link variety, but something of a more solid nature. It's a good thought, yeah. Uh, so that's all I have to say about that part. The other one is, could we look at the, the top roof, the, the top floor where these uh, Patios facing to the west are privacy patios. Yeah, that's it. Could you zoom up on that on one of those, please? I just want to know what the the partitioning is made of there. I can't quite understand what that is. Okay, yeah, we did have a slide in our presentation. So the partition is um it's basically a six foot high solid cedar fence. That'll run between the, the private patios. It'll run out from the wall to roughly halfway out, and then it's just landscape screening beyond that. For this unit, uh, private patio and the common outdoor patio, we're, we're running that fence all the way from the wall all the way out to the outer edge of the roof. I'm sorry, how high are these uh, partitions? Six, six feet high. So, and the door is solid as well. There's, there won't be a door in in those in those privacy screens between the units. What is that? A gate? No. What what you're showing a door leading onto the from yeah. the corridor to the patio. I think, I think that's part of the bizarreness, Paul. That 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 appears to be a full size door with a full size wall that leads up to the outdoor area. Is that correct, um, gentlemen? Sorry, I'm not seeing. Are, are we talking about that door? Okay. Just zoom into any entrance. Suppose I'm walking down the corridor. What do I see to my to my uh, away from my unit? To the right, out onto the patio. What am I looking at? That that's a, a full man door. Yeah. Is it a solid wall there? Yeah, that's, that's a solid. Yeah, wall. that's a solid wall. Yes. And the and the door is solid as well. Yes. <clears throat> so if I'm I, I'm having a big do out on the deck and uh, my neighbor walks by, he can't see or hear what I'm doing out there, unless he yeah, I know. His own kind of thing. I'm just exactly. wondering. I'm just wondering socially how these things work. And I'm not convinced they do work. But anyway, uh, that's my question. I'll have some comments later. I'm done with my questions. Thanks, Paul. Um, so I'll finish with my questions. Um, I think that from the beginning, we've had a struggle with, with some realistic depictions on this, um, on this proposal. Can you please confirm the the floor to floor ceiling height from level three to level four? I believe it says ten feet. And I believe you also. Yeah, you well, also floor to floor height that makes sense. Ten feet, so it'd be a nine foot ceiling. Yeah, so I believe you also were hoping for a nine foot ceiling. So that leaves ten uh, one foot of structure, and yet you're proposing these. Uh, a large number of trees. You're proposing outdoor areas, which are going to have to be cross-strapped and, and paving stones. Yet I don't see any steps leading from the inside to the outside, for example, like you would typically see when you're doing roof decks on wood frame, right? Um, so have you actually given any thought to how the structure and how the waterproofing, how any of that's actually going to work on the top level? Well, from the structural standpoint, we've had discussions with the structural engineer and, and they have solutions, be it steel beams if needed in, in certain locations. Sorry to interject, but and we can, we can uh, be more specific than that. If we've got a one foot floor system, right? No, ma no manner of steel beams is going to help you with cross strapping or your final finish on that roof deck. You're already talking about at least another four or five inches. So, I'm not under, like, I don't want you to deflect the question. I understand you're talking about a structural engineer, but these things are really like important when we're talking about what the actual experience is. Are people stepping up out of that corridor onto that, onto that raised deck? It has to be raised. I, I, can't, I can't see how it can't be raised in a foot. Yes, that's a good point. Yeah, so the, 
there would be a raised step as you as you step from the corridor onto the patio because you're obviously you're having pavers or whatever your finished surface is going to be out there. There there would be a step up from the corridor to the to the patio space. Yes. Yeah. So so wouldn't that step have to be inside? Like I, that's what I'm kind of getting at is is like the realisticness of it, right? Like I just I, I'm just not clear how it works from a from a pure detailing perspective. Right, and yeah, I'm not, I'm, I'm not fully understanding why the step would have to be inside. Yeah, and then another question, um, and I don't see it, and, and I guess it comes down to these, these mechanical boxes that you put on screen on same plan are confusing to me because it, 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 it suggests that you have a mechanical system. What is the mechanical system for this building that you're putting these mechanical units on the roof for? Well, the mechanical roof, Units are RTU. They're all pressurization units. They're, they're not. They're not a mechanical system for the entire building. Every unit would be handled individually. Um, but for our public spaces, our corridor pressurization, all of that would be handled through those rooftop units. Right. So it's curious when you actually look at the the floor plan below this top floor. That there's no allowance for any ducting in that one foot system. Like I'm just. I'm just really trying to drill down to see how resolved. Yeah. How resolved the systems. The basic systems and that's a fair ground. point but the, the nine foot ceilings that we're proposing that generally we don't have that in every single room there's lots of there's lots of areas where we have eight foot ceilings where we have to draw for mechanical duct work to, to make those units no, function I, as well yeah, as I, I realize that but that's with the floor below so how do you push that through without creating shafts throughout your whole building down to the lower floors i'm just trying to understand the level of resolution of the building Right. There would be you'd have a, a duct that comes down from that unit into the ceiling of the top floor. It would run horizontally to a mechanical shaft that's likely going to be in the stairwell or notched out of one of the units, and that would run vertically all the way through the entire building. Sure. And and what are you thinking about for mechanical systems for things like domestic hot water, uh, heating, and that type of thing? Uh, typically, and we haven't got to the level of design again, but typically for a building like this, we would do a communal boiler or hot water system. Um, the ultra solution would be individual units for 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 each unit, but we haven't we haven't decided that yet. Okay, but yeah, and there's no space in the units for that, right? No, but there'd be like small ceiling mounted cassettes in in, in somewhere in a, in a bedroom closet or something like that, depending on the unit, obviously. But uh, likely going to be a communal boiler system uh, that that feeds the entire building. Okay, and and one last question, um, just have you considered with that wall? that separates the corridor from these outdoor amenity spaces, the private ones. Have you considered opening that up at all? Basically, from the outside, you have 172 lineal feet of wall with no window. The only relief you have are solid doors. Was there a reason, like a design reason behind that or something? Yeah, it kind of ties into what Paul asked earlier, just a bit of privacy yeah. for those outdoor spaces from the interior of the building so that people can be out there and, and, and not worry about having a big window behind them where people are walking down the corridor or looking in on what's happening. Well, I, mean, I mean, just thinking about it from an architectural perspective, everyone knows that motion and action actually enhances people's experience of outdoor spaces and indoor spaces. There's that vibrancy that occurs. There's only, a number, there's only a handful of units. I don't know if there's going to be a lot of people traipsing down there and you're going to have the traffic that you would have on the street. So it just seems like a, a bit of a strange one. I was just wondering if you had actually considered that. That's, that's, that's something, there's not that many units up on that floor. That's something we can consider to add some glazing along there and glazing along the doors. That's something yeah. we'll work closely with the client on, on in terms of the design of those suite. Okay. Yeah, it just seems like a lost opportunity. And yeah. um, I have one last question. And this one is on the on the drawings on page um, RA 1.21. Is the West Parkade wall response? Sorry, RA 1.21. Uh, 1. 1. Okay, I got it. Yeah. Did you want me to bring it up? Yeah, please, just for the benefit of you. Uh, just bear with me here. So part of this response was talking about how we had some concerns about the sheer face of this wall, right? So part of it was a landscape response. Can you please zoom in to one of the guardrails that has appeared to be something green on it? Looks like maybe planters or something. Uh, sorry, one of the, oh, sorry guys. So okay, just zoom in tight to any one of your guardrails. It's on all of them. 
There you go, perfect. What are we looking at there? I think I know what you're drawing, but I don't see it represented anywhere else. And I'm just wondering about, is that just for this illustration or are you actually- no, well, that's, 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 the, that's, that's uh, sort of planting along the rails, the planter boxes and sort of planting arrangements to soften up that side of the building. So there's a better experience for the residents. On, on top of or hang onto this rail for the whole length of yeah. Yeah, and then that be irrigated and all of that kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean, they, they, some of the, it depends on what type of planting is going to be used. It, it, we're not 100% sure how the owner is going to manage the building, if they're going to centrally irrigate these things, or if they're going to have the residents do it, or have a committee of the residents take care of these plants. That's something we can work out later. But what we felt was to soften up a lot of those sort of longer decks, uh, both for the resident on the deck and for the people on the street, to give it some, some softness along the rail, rather than just have a glass rail. Okay. That sounds good. As long as they can upkeep it, because it's just going to end up empty if they can't, right? Okay, thank you. Those are all my questions. So the next um, the next portion here are, if there are no more questions, um, just going back to my original piece here, uh, is just going to comments um, uh, from from Pat. Five minute break or three minute break. Pardon me. Can we take a two or a three to five minute break? Uh, Sure. If you if you need to uh, perhaps take a bio break, we'll be back in three minutes. Well, I'm going to take a break, and I okay. Well, 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 well maybe we'll just keep going then because uh, Phil is a bit down the line and we're into comments. Um, so comments, we are going to go back to the original order. Uh, I know Paul, you just um, chimed in with your questions, um, but you were actually first in the line for comments, so. Uh, do you have any comments on the revised proposal? Okay, well, I, I have seen some improvements certainly over the uh, original presentation. He's addressed some of the issues, but there are some uh, things that still put my teeth on edge as, as to the architectural aspects of the planning in particular. Um, the units. Uh, some are forced. Uh, I, I think particularly about the one unit with the with the storage uh, wall now in place behind the bed and the, and the window at the end of a seven foot long uh, shaft, if you like. You almost think that, well, you know, why bother? Why not just simply make that a bachelor pad similar to the one opposite the elevator, which is a bachelor pad, but <clears throat> The, uh, in, in regards to that particular unit, its balcony is larger than the one bedroom unit next door to it. So you could probably add that, some of that balcony into the living space would be helpful, I think. Uh, uh, as far as the corridor improvement is concerned, yes, that certainly helps. The interior designer has gone in there and, and done some nice things, it looks like. But, I worry about uh, ceiling heights in a narrow corridor, like a five foot wide corridor with a nine foot ceiling is not a comfortable space. And, and I think you could probably drop the ceiling in the odd place as well and, and, and play with the lighting in that issue. Um, but yes, uh, as again, I, I'm concerned about some of the planning issues that, that uh, put my teeth on edge. Other than that, I, I, I don't think my any more comments will are necessary from that point of view. I think other architects on the panel can deal with that. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Um, so, Rashir, you are next up with comments for the applicants, please. Sure. Um, okay. Um, I'll start with uh, the landscape first. Uh, most of uh, the work that has been done in this proposal compared to last one is welcome and lots of good changes have been made. However, uh, as I pointed out, uh, towards the southwest side, I really don't see a good separation between this building, the parkade and so many floors looming on the adjacent property. So I guess a better uh, design would be required to kind of create a separation, especially a long uh, uh, linear development. And uh, 
going to the roof level uh, addition of the storage rooms is definitely a welcome addition but i don't think that landscape design works with uh, so many trees uh, and uh, so much of soil volume on a on a wooden structure so i would like you to consider that maybe revise the design in a way that it's more shrub based rather than tree frame based and uh, create a separation if you should if you do require to have a separation to other mechanical means uh, please do it uh, i added some screens but something else could be done but i guess tree is not a solution and you might want to take down or uh, consider uh, effectively what the structural implications of those kind of planters are going to be in the structure uh, I guess by and large, most of the points have been touched on, but I guess structural resolution of those issues have not been done as effectively as were requested in the last meeting. Uh, I just saw 94 minus five minus about five again, so about 84 meters long corridor. And uh, this is on, I don't know which floor it was, but I just, uh, I think this is third level plan. So it's about uh, 94 meters minus five meters and maybe minus seven meters. Uh, so it's about 80 plus meters of running corridor. And uh, I don't think uh, interior enhancements and in surfaces, treatments, etc., could take away from the daunting nature of that corridor. And, panel was careful in suggesting that there could be methods of breaking it down, creating jobs, creating so many other tools that could have been done. Uh, coming to the same plan, I think if you see uh, the Western wing, you see units, uh, smaller units, which do have that uh, advantage of uh, light coming through that tunnel. Uh, uh, which are uh, which are uh, which are inter in mixed with the C three unit D larger wider units. So why wasn't an attempt made in kind of made making some of these units wider, which did have these lighting problems, and other units being narrowed down? There was a good opportunity to kind of make sure that most of these units are livable. And uh, there is an opportunity because they are interspersed with wider units. So uh, I guess that's that's just a small adjustment that would have made most of these units very livable with respect to lighting conditions. I don't know why that uh, little exercise of realigning the unit shapes and there, I know there are certain units that you need to place to make the project viable. But I guess there could have been an opportunity um, availed in kind of adjusting the widths of these units to make sure the frontage is adequate to allow for am ample lighting to most of the bedrooms. So uh, that is one thing I think that it should still be explored. There's a, there's a vast uh, opportunity in doing that. Coming back to the top floor where that uh, blank wall facing the outdoor space is, is kind of uh, uh, head scratching and causing concern to a lot of panel members. I would uh, request you to rethink uh, the design of that wall. There could also be a potential. I know on the other floors you did have, as I said, 80 plus meters of running corridor that could not have been done any differently. Maybe there was a possibility of scooping out some all coves, etc., to make it more uh, friendly, so to speak. But on top floor, there is definitely a potential of adding some spaces, creating geometry to make it more, uh, more uh, friendly. There could have been places where uh, windows or frosted glasses or other such thing could have been done to make bring some outdoors in and to make that place more friendly. Uh, by and large, there are uh, there, there definitely 
definitely has been progress since the last submission, but some of the, as I said, structural points have not been addressed to the level that we expected them to. There have been some points which have been touched upon, but I guess uh, further enhancement is needed. Those are my comments. Thank you. Thank you for your comments, for sure. Um, next Next on the list is Nicholas. Nicholas, comments, final comments for the applicants, please. Okay. Um, thank you again, I guess, to everybody, and thank you again to the applicant for all the updates. Um, I'm going to try not to repeat the same comments that uh, Rashir just pointed out. So, um, so I'm actually going to just, I think, just concentrate. I think inherently where I think where I see the project where it started and where it's kind of have a domino effect. I mean, if I can maybe just so blunt, I just think the building's too long. I think by making a 400 foot long building, you've inherently caused your domino effect of problems. Now, I don't think that's going to stop me from, you know, approving the project or anything, but I just think inherently, I think you just created, you just created a very long building, a long wall on a residential street. Uh, street. It's not any more complicated than that. And because of that, you've created a domino effect. Now you've got to deal with landscape how do you deal with a landscape that's 400 feet long? How do you deal with a window pattern and material palette that deals 400 feet long? Like you just, that inherent massing has just created, I think, a lot of problems for the building. You know, just, I was just, as someone was speaking earlier, I just, on uh, my PDF thing, I threw a little white blank space right in the middle of your building where the entry, where the entry building, is, where, <coughs> excuse me, where the entry door is, where you have your elevation. I just put a blank piece and, you know, just so I know that it has a huge domino effect as well on your area and in your density, but it's amazing the difference of the building looks like if you just, if you were to build two buildings that are interlinked on several floors versus actually having a 400 foot long building. So I'm not going to beat a, beat a dead horse on that over and over again, but that I think inherently is my main comment for the building. Again, I don't think it's going to stop me approving in it. I think it's just a general comment that's, um, I hope, uh, hope it doesn't happen again, let's just say that. Um, other than that, I think I'll stop there. I think all the fine details of like, like um, the screens, like the uh, privacy screens we've all talked about, uh, the landscape everyone's talked about. So again, um, that being said, um, I think there's been a huge amount of improvement over the last you know, three, four iterations. For that, I do uh, commend the applicant for improving it every time. Um, but I think I'll, I'll finish there. Thanks, Joe. Thank you, Nicholas. All right, Faye, you are up with comments for the yeah, applicants, please. Yeah, I just want to thank um, the applicant for all the effort that has been uh, provided and, and for uh, some of the improvements and progress. Um, to add to other comments that have been made, uh, I do have concerns, but I'm not an architect, so I can't get into the specifics in terms of, you know, the dynamics and the measurements, etc. Um, I I just want it in the end to be a a building that's going to provide a feasible living space for this community and for all the people who end up purchasing those units. And so I think, you know, coming from our perspective is to protect, you know, in the end, to protect the people that will end up buying it and then having an issue afterwards, like the rooftop that has been discussed with the, with the number of trees, is it going to support it, etc. cetera. Um, I do like the um, improvement to the small, uh, small bedroom the custom built in closet to provide natural light. I think you're you're making that effort, but there's there's other issues that um, um, need to be considered. And and I can't give specifics on that again because I'm I'm not an architect, but uh, um, yeah, I that's that's my comment. Thank you. Sorry, thank you. So next is oh next is Phil. So Phil, kindly with your comments for the applicants, final comments. Thank you, and thank you for allowing me the, the break. Um, the I have just one basic uh, issue because we, you know, we started a couple of meetings ago where I made a 
uh, my comment was about from a community point of view and and related to the uh, the multifamily development permit guidelines, um, which state insured buildings are compatible with and complementary to uh, the adjacent developments in terms of height, density, etc. And at that time, my comment was that it looked like a, a big boat that had just been plopped down. And since then, I appreciate the 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 uh, decrease in the number of units and the and the height of the building. That's that was an important improvement. Uh, and since then, we have been talking about details, and those are important details. But it's all been within the context of this overall design. I've never been happy with it but we have to react to what is in front of us uh, and in the meantime the OCP was changed um, which is, is uh, extremely important uh, as the context for the neighborhood and that neighborhood is going to be changing according to the OCP and zoning but the reality is that this building is still like a large boat it's just a slightly smaller large boat uh, that's been put down so it's going back to what Nicholas said um, but we don't tell, we don't design, we react to the designs. Uh, and so it's not like I'm happy. I don't think it entirely fits within the neighborhood. And where I'm going with this is I think ADP has done as much as it can. I think it's up to council to decide. And that's why my question to, to um, Greg was uh, what type of approvals are needed. And that's basically a zoning change and a major development, a major development permit. Because the fundamental issue to me is mass and density and the long, single long building. Um, set back a little bit, but not, uh, that's okay. I mean, I think that the, they dealt with that. Uh, so that may even meet the, I'm not sure that meets the uh, design guidelines. We've talked about at least three meters. But fundamentally, it's just this large, long building. And I don't think it, may, if it fits within the existing neighborhood. The neighborhood's going to be changing, and that's going to be changing because of developments in the area. So I think it really is up to council to have to grapple with that. So, but I don't think ADP, or me at least, can, can help improve upon it. Well, I mean, there are always improvements you can make, but I don't think there's any more that I can do as a member of ADP with respect to uh, that basic issue, um, which I think council has to grapple with. So those, that's my basic, that's my overall comment. Thank you. Great, thank you, Phil. Uh, that leads me. Um, I think you said a few things there quite well, Phil, um, that I agree with. Uh, you know, we have been talking a lot about the details of a reduced application. I think that's good. Um, I think we also have limits on, on what we can do here in terms of making recommendations. Ultimately, it is not up to us. They're simply recommendations. Um, but to the actual architecture, I, you know, I, I have to say that I, there's, I'm a little bit disappointed with some of the non-changes or non, um, you know, it's been identified here by the panel that there's some fairly simple fixes or simple ways to improve light penetration, particularly on the east side, um, potentially simple fixes to the roof and, and the relationship between the amenity areas and the suites, um, that essentially we're looking at the same thing with a walk-in closet that's been changed into a desk area. Um, and to me, that seems almost too easy when a shift of a wall and changing one to a studio and one to a one bedroom instead of the other way around would solve the problem. And it's an interesting thing that it hasn't been looked at in more detail um, when there was certainly ample, it was made amply clear that that would be something that we'd be looking at again today. And we're looking at the same thing. Um, you know, when you look at the storage around the beds, I mean, that's not enough storage for hanging clothes for one person, much less two people who would probably be in that bedroom, right? And so from a quality of life perspective, I agree about the proposal. There have been a number of uh, tweaks we we'll call them on the outside with respect to landscape, definitely moving forward um, for sure. But, um, you know, I think like a couple of panelists have said, is, is this my favorite building? Um, I'm struggling with aspects of it and aspects of it that I think can be easily improved. So we'll leave it at that. And um, I, 
I will have the, uh, this opportunity for the proponents to um, reply back to the comments they've heard from the panel as a whole. Um, I see that Peter's hand has been up for a while, and I'm guessing uh, being part of your development team, you'd like him to speak first. He's welcome to. Um, so I'll just hand it over to Peter or to Keystone to uh, respond if you want to, to the comments that have been uh, put forward by the panel. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I will respond on behalf of Weststone, and uh, I'm sure that if Lucas and Eric have anything else that I've missed, I think there's a couple of key points here. Is number one, as this moves forward, there are a number of steps within the city process that, of course, uh, Weststone has to go through. The first one is first and second reading, and needless to say, there is a lot of detailed structural engineering work that has to be done. And as Keystone has said, um, that detailed work in terms of load bearing for trees on the roof and the amount of soil and how that is accommodated and can be accommodated in a wood structure will be dealt with. The other major element here is that based on this moving forward, uh, Westone is working with their marketing team and with the design team to look at all of the elements within the building to make it livable, to make it what people are looking for. And again, part of that is going to be the analysis of the target markets. And I say markets because I think this building has more than one potential market for housing that we know White Rock is hoping to have in the future. So that work will go on and design elements in hallways and things like that, how to make and to break that view is going to be done. I will say again, what's really important here is that, you know, we, we reached out to the neighbors, we reached out to the coalition, we offered them an opportunity to have a Zoom meeting to answer any of the technical questions on traffic management because all of those studies have been done. The landscaping and the arborist study on tree protection and all of those issues. Greg has uh, clearly expressed what the city will require in terms of uh, assurances and deposits on landscaping protection and so on. So at the end of the day, Westone is not planning on building a building that people aren't going to want to live in. And I think that's a key and the work that's been done. And I know that a lot of architectural design is in the eye of the architect. And I've seen two architects at any one time not agree on certain things. However, the Keystone team has worked very hard to try and address all of the issues. Uh, there is more detailed work that has to be done. The commitment is to do that, to ensure that this building is something that if it does move ahead and goes into construction, that the city of White Rock will be proud of. And from Westone's point of view, a building that is viable from an economic point of view. Because as has been said, you can do all kinds of things, but if you can't afford it, or the people who you want to attract to it can't afford it, then you're really not serving anybody's interest. So I want to thank the panel. This has been four sessions, a lot of discussion, a lot of work, a lot of commitment. And as I said, Westone is committed to staying in White Rock, and this work has hopefully been a reflection of their commitment to do that. Great. Thank you, Peter, for your words. Um, Keystone, uh, gentlemen, either of you want to respond in, in addition? Uh, no, I know Peter summed that up really well for us. So thank you all for your time. Yeah. Wonderful, thank you. So turning back to the panel now, um, we need a motion on this project. Phil, do you have a question? No, I'd like to um, present a motion. Um, but before I move it, I'd like to have a discussion. So that there doesn't have to be a problem. Is that, under, is that acceptable? Sorry, can you hear me? Sorry, Joe. You were, you were, you were, I'm muted. Sorry, I was muted. Um, Phil, I think the normal course of, is for you to make the motion, second it, and then we discuss it and then vote on it, right? Yeah. But uh, if there's just a, okay. this uh, is a simple question. But here's my, you know, I'm reading the, the, the what do you call it, our, yep. here's, here's, 
First, I want to re read my, my interpretation. Of course, go ahead, please. Okay. It says the motion may be presented as follows or with alternate, alternate format as desired by the panel. In the past, I have moved motions that have read directly from the four choices that we have. I don't think, in my view, any one of the four properly reflects my opinion and from what I'm hearing, the opinion of at least several other members of the panel. Because one of them is a recommendation to support the project proceeding to council subject to consideration, da 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 da. I'm, that's read by basically in the way the city, the city um, interprets ADP or has is support from the ADP. And I'm not willing to do that. On the other hand, I'm not, I don't think it needs to come back here. I think what I think it needs to do, it needs to go forward for first and second reading, hear from the public at a, the public hearing, and then see where it goes. That's my own view because um, anyway, that's my view. So what I would move, and I will move since you make me move something, it is because it doesn't have to be this. It has to be a, uh, so it's an alternative format. Yeah, that's fine. Go ahead. Okay. A recommendation to support the project proceeding to council for its next consideration, despite ongoing concern as outlined as raised during this committee, uh, during this meeting. It is putting in a despite, and and I mean that, is, which is what I stated. And I Sorry, think. Would you mind reading that again? I, it was breaking up a bit. I just want to make sure I'm understanding it correctly. Okay. A recommendation. My proposal is to support the project proceeding to council for its consideration, despite ongoing concerns that are outlined, and we can come to what that list is, or simply refer it back. Mention about the minutes. Because I, I, I do believe that there are ongoing concerns, but I think the public and council need to deal with those. That's my view. That's fair enough, Phil. So, fair enough for a motion for you? Is that an acceptable motion? I don't mean yeah, to. I mean, it is, it is for me. So, I need a seconder for that motion, please, from the panel. So I'll second it. Okay, I'll sorry, who was that? Okay, Faye. All right, so any further discussion on the motion put forward by yeah, Phil? I, uh, I, 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 I have a strong opinion on this. I think uh, council takes the opinion of ADP for uh, matters of form, character, and other design criteria that they are, uh, they are not technically equipped to deal with themselves. And I guess there are so many issues that need to be resolved still. I don't think it can proceed to the council without our approval. And I, for one, think that more work is required. So it's a it's a large project. I'm not going to be supporting it to be proceeding to the council. Okay. So my question is, Rashir would then my because I'm trying to get clarity on that. So yours would be for it to come back here or to deny it? No, later to come back here. To come back if required. The sorry, may I continue? The reason it's not I, a, it's in my opinion it's not a it's not a duplex that can uh, that can pass or whatever it's a large project involving a lot of uh, investment of time resources employment housing and everything and i think it uh, deserves to be it is continuing to evolve and develop but uh, some very basic uh, items still need to be resolved further and I think they need to be done before it can proceed to the council. I'm, if I may, I'm sympathetic to that, but I'm reading that the recommendation, that's a recommendation to deny because assumes the applicant is not amenable to making changes in response to the feedback of the panel. And that's what I'm hearing a lot here. No, uh, no. Uh, uh, if the panel wants to say that, applicant wants to say that they don't want to do changes it's a different thing 
but i guess we they've continued to develop and evolve and i think we should give them opportunity to de develop it to an extent which could be recommended to the council well then if i my last comment the question is for me the basic issue is the massing the large boat and if they are going to stay with this it's not going to change my opinion well i guess what what would i guess if we just to understand yours well as well, Phil. You say I approve it to council, but with like almost like with hesitation, we're, we're approving it. Um, council may, when it eventually does go to council for first reading, they could just say, "Well, we want to go back. We want 100% approval from ADP." So now it's going to go all the way back again anyway. <clears throat> so they have that possibility of losing that time due to that to that process. That council may, you know, like we, we're not like Rashir said. You know what? We need we need the approval of ADP before we put this forward. So we're going to unfortunately pass the applicant to go back to ADP again for a resolution. Well, if that's so I'm just trying to decide a bit on the applicant a bit here. Like I'll, I would be, even though I kind of I like the idea hypothetically in theory, but I just have also like a doubt. Like when Rashir says it, it's, a, it's a good point that Rashir says that it could be actually not benef beneficial. We're just prolonging the inevitable that it has to come back anyway. I'm, I'm concerned. I'm concerned that this. Uh, it sounds like the design panel has become a distillery. Get my meaning. You, you. We can't continually design projects for people. If they can't sense the fact that they're off base on this thing, which I believe they are. Uh, then what is the design panel for? We, we either approve or disapprove, and it's up to the council. And on. That's my view. Can I ask a very good question? If we, if we, can it go to council against our objection? Sure. Yeah. So, any other discussion on on this? Can we go to vote on it then? On the motion. Well, I don't know if I want to make that motion because I'm not <laughs> on that motion because I don't know. I don't know whether I want to vote for my own motion now because I don't know what my alternatives are. Yeah, well, you don't, you don't have to vote for your own motion. <laughs> we can defeat it and someone can and, and uh, propose well, a new motion. Would, can I hear from what would be the alternative that comes, comes back here? Well, that, that, that appears to be what the alternative is. Um, Joe, it's Faye. I'm just yeah. wondering, um, Greg, can you provide any insight as to how, what you, your thoughts are on this? Uh, yeah, I can. So you do have a motion on the, on the table now. It's been moved and seconded. So we will definitely want to vote on the motion. Um, if say the motion fails and we're kind of left in this limbo situation, I think we could certainly get a second motion on the table that might be something aligned with what Rashir is suggesting. Is that there's there's an alternative, there are a couple of alternatives here. So one is I would um, if the panel wishes the file to come back, we could have that conversation. I could debrief with the applicant, and it may be that I say to the applicant, alternative to bringing the file back. I would I could move the project forward and present a report to council. I would be highlighting that the panel was not supportive of the project and I would be outlining the reasons why. And I think some of the, the reasons that I've highlighted in the meeting minutes here are the massing and the length of the building is of concern. Some of the reliability of the architectural design is of concern. Um, one of the things that I sort of have, have sidebarred for myself is the reliability of the architectural design and its impact the massing and form of the building. Again, keep in mind a key mandate of the panel is to look at the architectural form and character of the building against the development permit area guidelines. That's the core mandate of the panel. Um, so I I believe many of the urban design guidelines that apply to this project have been adequately addressed. That's my opinion. A lot of the architectural design components have not been addressed to the satisfaction of the members of this panel from what I've heard of the last four meetings. So I would present all that, but the conclusion of what that section of the report would be is that the panel is not supportive of the project as presented. And, and we have probably 30 members of the public in the room here today. I suspect they're gonna make the sentiment of the panel very well known to council. 
So I think the, the applicant is going to want to debrief after today's meeting and decide, do they request that staff continue to advance the file forward and present something to the Land Use and Planning Committee, which is the Standing Committee of Council, or do they take the feedback that they've received this evening, go back to the drawing board and figure out whether or not they want to come back? Like that's, I'll leave that with them. So I think, Phil, for example, if your motion passes and it's to recommend that the uh, the project proceed to council for its consideration despite ongoing concerns as outlined in meeting minutes. I would present that to council um, with potentially a draft bylaw for consideration of first and second reading. If it fails, and again, maybe we're, we're sort of in lieu of a motion, we look for a second motion, which might be that the application be deferred and that it come back to the panel. I think, though, that if there's a fourth deferral, the terms of reference do allow the director to bring a file forward regardless. So that may be the conversation that I have with, with Carl Isaac, is do we at this point bring a file forward knowing that it's been to the panel four times now? Like I, This isn't really a precedent that I think we want to set as a community, is that files come to the panel four plus times. Yeah. It may be that we advance the file to council and stress the reservations of the panel and just allow council to make the decision based on other considerations as well, which be the considerations for the public. So that was a long-winded way of saying that I think you should vote on this motion that you have on the table and then consider whether or not you'd want to present a second motion or just allow the motion to lie as being defeated. So Mr. Chair, thank you for my motion. Sorry, I can't, I can't hear you, Phil. I would like to withdraw my motion if whoever seconded Fay agrees, because I prefer a stronger, because I'm concerned that it will be read by council by forwarding it to them as we've approved it to be forwarded. I have more significant concerns. I would prefer Greg's approach, which is we do not support it as presented. But that process with Greg. Okay, so Phil, you're, 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 you're submitting a new motion now? So that so if they agree, I would make. Yeah, I agree. He, so, Phil, basically, you're saying you want to withdraw your motion. That's right. If you agree, and I'll I'll agree. Okay. okay. Well, my so, new motion would be because. Yeah. Uh, sorry. My sorry. new motion, would be, along the lines of what Greg said, would be the panel does not support the the project. As, uh, as presented to the panel for the reasons outlined, the concerns that Greg can summarize. And then it's up to the process that Greg talked about between planning department, <coughs> the applicant, and then council to decide how it goes forward or, not. or whether it comes back to us. But I think from my understanding what you're saying, Greg, that, you know, maybe don't, I mean, I guess maybe the big question, is there a way that you add a motion that the applicant also has an option to either go straight to council or just work with you about whether coming back or not? Yeah, through you, Mr. Chair, I think that might be an option. So what we could do is that the panel defer um, recommending support and on support for the application uh, to the applicant and the applicant then can determine whether or not they wish to present an alternative project to the panel which addresses substantively the comments received today and in earlier meetings, or whether they wish to ask that staff advance the file for consideration by the city's land use and planning committee. So you could defer to the discretion of the applicant at this point, yeah. because I think in order to get the support yeah. of the panel, they, from what I'm hearing, they need to make fairly substantive changes to the project. Okay. So that would be an well, option. Yeah, because I only think like if the applicant if the applicant believes and if the applicant believes in in their project, then they should work with 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 the, the planning department to push it forward. But if they see some sort of what we're in our comments that these you know they agree with it, then maybe they maybe they do agree to come back. Right. So can we can we fast the motion then uh, in that regard? Yeah. So let me let me give me two minutes to write that out and then I'll read it to the panel. Figure sure. out what the best word is to allow what Nicholas and and Greg are talking about. I think I, I think the simple the simple wording would be the panel does not support the design as presented. 
and then rest can be taken care by the planning department and the applicants, right? That's I true, isn't that? That's clear. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So Rashir, just to put that into like into the words to align it with sort of the the terms of reference, it would be that the panel deny the application on the basis of its um well on the basis of the feedback received during the meeting yeah and that they defer to the applicant as to whether or not they wish but like if you're going to recommend that it not be supported that it be denied based on its design merits um that should be the motion and then the discretion okay. falls to staff as to bring it forward with the position or not precisely so can we can we leave it at that then Greg? So, yeah, if there's a mover and seconder do, do, to recommend that. Yeah, so we get a seconder for Bashir's motion. I'll second Bashir's motion. So Thank do you want to get, what's the wording now that we're talking about? I think Greg needs a minute or two just yeah. to put the language in. And then we'll go to vote. Let's give him a minute. Yeah, so there's there's two components. So that the panel recommend that the that the recommendation to deny the application on the basis of the factors listed in the meeting minutes. And again, the sort of the add on to that in the terms of reference is that the assumption is that the applicant is not amenable to making the changes. But I think given this is the fourth review, I wouldn't say that the applicant has not been amenable because I think they have been amenable and they have attempted to resolve the, the concerns that's raised by the panel. Um, but we're still we're still we're still not sort of seeing the concerns of the panel being fully satisfied. So the recommendation of the panel is that the application be denied on the basis of the factors listed. And then I will debrief with Carl on whether or not we continue to bring the file forward, or we'll debrief with the applicant on whether or not they wish to um, to request a reconsideration by the panel. Greg, so, just a, a question because that wording then allow major issues basic issues, right? That you would work as part of our recommendation. In other words, the concern is, remember this is Ted, a report is gonna to go to council. Um, and what we've done before is where our minute shows not a second part of it. I'm getting terrible feedback. Awesome. Yeah, I've muted Joe. Sorry, Joe, every time I, I, I've been muting you, I apologize, um, I get a bit of feedback. Okay, so what the, the, in the past, the ADP actually listed as part of its recommendation, the uh, a short list. And now in the more recent meetings, we've just said, see the minutes. Given the seriousness or the, or the significance of this recommendation, it's not just comments for the applicant, but this is something that council and, and Carl and others will see is I think it's important for us to be on the same page of what is that list of issues that is causing this. And for me, I want to say the, the that's, that's sort of like, whoops. I think, I think we are complicating this. This has to have the emotion, which is clear. And, and I think we've uh, uh, succinctly put forward that, yeah, uh, the panel does not approve the design as presented today. And I think it can be handled by the plan, planning department to bring it back. Sorry, I didn't necessarily mean it be part of the recommendation, uh, but it'd be clear when it's conveyed to others, not to simply say, read the minutes. So that it becomes something that, that, uh, that Greg can come up, and this can be something that he could pass along to uh, to um, Joe, for example, is to say, is this capture the essence of the main concerns rather than require council or others to read the minutes and try to just get us. You know? Yeah, and, and Phil, that's fine, but I, I do agree with Rashir that that should be outside of the motion. Right? That's fine so with me. We can sharpen that up later. So. Uh, did we have a seconder for the motion then? Yeah, I seconded it. Oh. Okay, so can can we please now go to vote on this? I think we're oh, the question. Kick this more. Yeah, so uh, I'll start in order again, starting with Paul for or against the motion. Uh, for the motion. Thank you. And then to sorry about order now, Rushir for or against the motion. For. And then Nicholas for or against the motion. For please. 
Thank you. Uh, Kay, for or against the motion? Hi, it's Faye and I am for the motion. Thank you. And Phil, for or against the motion? For the motion. And I am also for the motion. So it's unanimous for the motion to, um, uh, well, I won't repeat the motion because <laughs> I'm getting confused. But um, yeah, so it is unanimous to move the, to, for the motion. So it has uh, passed. Just, sorry, Mr. Chair. Um, so it was moved by Phil. Who seconded it? Was it Paul that seconded that? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And the motion. It was Paul's moved by me. It was moved by me and uh, seconded by Paul. By Paul. Okay. Thank Correct. you, Rashir. So what I've written as the motion that we've just passed unanimously is that the panel deny the application as presented. That is correct. And leaving it, to, and now we'll leave it to you. Okay. Okay. So thank you to the presenters again, um, collectively for your efforts. Um, it is appreciated. I know it's probably not the result you wanted, but thank you again. Um, and. Uh, I guess that is our meeting for tonight, folks. So thank you all for attending and your comments. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Bye. You. Thank you.